My life started with my mom screaming in pain while I popped out of her vagina in an explosion of blood, fireworks and pixie dust. That was kinda gory, wasn't it? I apologize for that. And also for lying, my mom didn't even have a normal labor. The part about the pixie dust was true though. Okay, so let's start again. It all began sometime around lunchtime, which is the reason for my constant hunger, I believe. In Brasilia, the capital of Brazil. The doctor pushed me out from my mother's belly and told her I was a girl. Yay! Coming from her second marriage and finally being the little girl my two older brothers obviously couldn't be, she was extremely happy and carried on spoiling me with almost everything I wanted, this being food or toys, but mostly food. Funny fact about me and toys, when I was around 3 years old I believed that I couldn't trust anything that wouldn't taste good in my mouth. Dad made my mom cover a lot of my toys in a thin layer of sweetener. I know it sounds wrong, and I am happy to inform you that I lost that habit and I no longer go around leaking things. Or people, I swear. But back in those hardcore tongue exercise days, I guess I liked the taste of my Disney VHS tapes the most, since I would spend hours of my days watching The Lion King three times in a row. Unfortunately, not even all of my mom's love and general spoilings of me were able to stop me from having my dreams broken the day my first grade teacher asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I answered the Yellow Power Ranger. I don't quite remember what went on after all of my little classmates laughed and my teacher told me I couldn't be the Yellow Ranger, but I know for sure it must have been sad and painful. After losing the purpose of my life at the age of 7, I decided to find a new goal, so I figured out I wanted to be a Pokemon trainer. On my 10th birthday though, there was neither Professor Oak nor Squirtle for me, and so I proceeded to wait for my Hogwarts letter, which never came. I bought one years later, but it doesn't feel the same without the owl poop. After all of those disappointments, you'd guess I was used to feeling hopeless. But then I went to a military school and life got a lot harder. I had developed a new obsession with the Japanese culture, anime, manga, cosplay, visual K and especially J-Rock. Now, if you never had the space and have absolutely no idea of what those things are, all you need to know is that Japan is awesome, but pretty fucking weird too. I would go to anime conventions and be friends with all those cool and popular gothic lolita girls with their faces all pierced and pink hair. Happily for my mom, but discouraging to me, since I studied in a military school I couldn't even get my nails painted, let alone get a tattoo or piercing. And so I never got those awesome visuals like the cool kids in town. Thanks, mom. No, but seriously, mom, thank you. I know it sounds stupid now, but for me it was a really big deal. On the top of that, I was always excluded from the school groups for not having the same interests that all of them had, and it was hard for me. When I turned 14, I started wondering about all of those life questions we all have at that age. Is this all that life has in store for me? And na 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 na. And since I was afraid the answer was yes, I started cutting myself. I never did anything big though, just some ugly looking scratches. But when my mom found out, man, she got pissed. Nowadays I'm glad she reacted the way she did, because I think that if she had only hugged me in pity, I wouldn't have stopped. She made me think about people who weren't able to do the simplest things I do on a daily basis, like going to the bathroom. People who have no arms, for example, and need help to clean themselves and to do pretty much everything. It does sound dramatic, but it made me realize just how selfish I was being. So, instead of asking her to enroll me in another school, I made up my mind to keep trying, and when I finally graduated high school, I had made some of the best friends that I have today, and I could hardly remember those sad times. 
Right after that, college came, and after two years of a lot of hardcore studying in journalism, I finally got my first part-time job. And I hated it. Basically, I had to read other people's theses and write articles about them. But since I was too shy in the interviews, I was afraid to ask about what I didn't understand. That was pretty much everything. So, I would stay up the whole night searching really complex theories and studying them, just to write about them without making any mistakes. Because of that conversation I had with my mom, I thought giving up was a sign of weakness. And for that, I carried on working in this place and getting really stressed with my college classes for six long months. Yeah, it took me a while to figure out that giving up is actually the best thing you can do in some situations. And that life is just too short to waste my time worrying about things that make me sad. So, one day, I just went to my boss and said I would leave. Simple as that. Bye, peace, see you never. At the end of the same year, I applied to the Disney College program and I got accepted. Even though I worked at Disney Quest and not actually in the parks, I was absurdly happy. Going to Hollywood Studios or Magic Kingdom every week, playing on the rides, and eating bacon and burgers with the Disney cast member discount. <laughs> that period was probably the happiest I ever was in my life. I also made lots of awesome friends there, and I still talk to them on Skype every now and then. Bad thing is that the program was only for 4 months, and in the blink of an eye I was back in Brazil, proving to the world that I could, in fact, become even more of a Disney freak by returning home with 4 suitcases full of Disney merchandise. One semester later, I applied to an exchange program to study in Italy, and so I left for the second time, but this time for a whole year. I am now living in Siena, a small city right next to Florence, and every day I meet new people from all over Europe and get together to drink wine and eat delicious Italian pizza. Even though I really miss the mouse, I am now super happy and I can look back at my life so far and be proud of every little thing I conquered. And who knows, maybe Gandalf will knock on my door when I turn 50 and take me on an adventure! Hi! So, this is the face behind the drawings, and first of all, I guess I would like to thank you all for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, it really means a lot to me, especially because I know the video is super long. I tried my best to do as short as I could, but it turns out I'm not actually good at trying to do stuff shorter. So, <laughs> there you go, yay! And there's just one more thing I'd like to say. The game! You lost it. Ciao!